Hello everyone and welcome back. This week we're supposed to start um, a short series of about three episodes comparing the sound, the audio between the two box sets that we looked at last week, the Beatles in Mono and the Beatles in Stereo from 2009. We're still going to do that. Uh, we're going to start in this month of December. Uh, the three episodes are already filmed. They are uh, going to be edited and launched on the channel sometime in the next few weeks. Um, but today, I thought we'll do something a little bit different, uh, step a little bit away from the Beatles-centric uh, discussions that we've had so far, and look at some of the items in my collection which I consider to be somewhat special, um, that not, don't necessarily have something to do with the Beatles. There will be a couple of Beatles items, of course, uh, but most of the others will not be related. I wouldn't say these items are necessarily everybody's cup of tea. They might be in a lot of people's collections. Um, some of them are classics, I think. Um, but they're just a combination of um, things that I think uh, we wouldn't see them put together on the same shelf in someone's collection, but they are um, very important to me or they caught my eye when I was building my collection. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to share them with you. Beyond this, uh, like I said, in the next few weeks we're going to start with that uh, three-part series on comparing the audio of the Beatles in Mono and the Beatles in Stereo box sets. Uh, but also in December, probably we're going to interrupt that series at some point after one or two episodes um, for the holiday period, because I think close to uh, the Christmas uh, period and then to the New Year's, uh, we're going to have a couple of more special episodes, uh, a more personal discussions, uh, where I'm going to talk a little bit about my history with music and especially with the Beatles and how they helped me in my life in some difficult moments and how I got into them, um, what kind of music I was listening to when I was a little kid, uh, how my musical taste evolved, um, and maybe we're going to intertwine that discussion with also a few elements of how music was being uh, released and purchased uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, in the uh, Eastern Bloc, at least in Romania, uh, near the end of the 80s and beginning of the 90s when the Iron Curtain fell. So I hope you'll find that interesting as well. I wanted to do it earlier, but I think Christmas and New Year's going to be a good period to present that story because it's, again, very personal to me. Until then, today, like I said, let's look at some special items from my collection. So stick around. Okay, so before we start, um, I do have a disclaimer. I'm really bad with dates. My degree, uh, or part of my university degree is in history, but still I'm bad with dates. So I don't always remember every little bit of trivia about the things that I read. I need to read them um, many times to, for something to stick with me. Um, but yeah, I've written some things down about these uh, th uh, CDs that I'm going to show you, these albums. Some of the elements I know myself, but also when I film I'm a little bit nervous, even if I'm alone filming, uh, especially if I'm with somebody else. Sometimes for the longer videos I did set up a complete script that I'm reading off, um, at least partially, but this time I, I don't have that, or most of the times I didn't have that actually. So, you know, uh, forgive me if I make some of them some mistakes. I do want to say that I appreciate a lot the interactions that I've had in the past weeks on the channel. I'm super happy that people, some people at least enjoy it or at least, you know, take some time to watch it. And uh, some of them are coming in the comments and, and giving me pointers or just correcting some things that I said. So I'm really grateful for that. Some things I mess up in the videos, although I know them. Some of them I just um, have the wrong information at the time, but hopefully uh, I'm learning for future discussions. So yeah, so the first thing that I want to show you um, is this, the Sound of Music soundtrack. Now, of course, this is not an uncommon item. A lot of people probably have it in their collection, uh, or at least the big collectors do have it. Uh, when I'm talking about CDs, not vinyl necessarily, um, I wanted to show this. So this is not like an extraordinary item from a musical perspective. It's not like a very important album, but it is to a certain extent an iconic one because the film and the musical were iconic in their own right in terms of cinema. Um, so, you know, the movie was um, released in, in 1965 
and uh, the soundtrack was released in the same year on vinyl at the time probably uh, but uh, there was a CD um, issue of this um, that happened during the 1980s 1984 was the first time it was released this version that I have is actually an anniversary edition a 30th anniversary edition um, it was or anyway it was printed on CD uh, in the year 2000 when when the the movie turned 35 but on Discogs if you look at the page of the product it shows that it was released in 2001 now the reason that I like this one um, it's because of the movie specifically and I'll, I'll tell you just a little bit of story of the movie uh, or how, how I came into contact with it um, but I do like the way that the edition is built, the anniversary edition. So it is a digipack. I don't love digipacks except for the design that they have, like visual design, but I hate the way that they are constructed. Usually, like you saw in my previous Beatles videos, they can um, create some issues for the discs and uh, you know increase the, the um, probability of scratching them. But this one was built better because it has this plastic disc holders. It also has two discs, so it has a bonus one. It's not just the um, original album recordings, let's say. It also has a booklet inside, which I'm going to take out, show you a little bit. Um, it has the pink discs, which are nice. So, you know, it's overall a nice, nice uh, rendition of it. Now, I have to say the sound, I listened to it, so the sound did not strike me as a very good version of it. I don't know, maybe there are better ones. Maybe in the future I'll try to buy or to get some other ones and see. Um, this is the booklet. It has some details about how the score was written, um, the ideas behind the film and so on, and also some pictures from the, pic from the film itself. Um, I didn't want to say a little bit about how and why I kind of have this. Um, so obviously the movie, uh, is the film is a classic. Uh, a lot of people might consider, you know, for good reason, that it's full of some Hollywood tropes, um, you know, cl some cliches of the period and uh, beyond that period. Um, but this movie really impressed me when I was a child, both from the film's perspective and musically. Um, I remember very distinctly when I first saw it. So you have to imagine that um, near the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, when again the Iron Curtain fell, at least in Romania, the access to music and Western uh, movies, art, cinema, uh, every, any type of culture was very restricted, especially since the late 70s, second part of 70s and the beginning and all of the 80s. And in the 90s, everything exploded but gradually and the quality of items that were coming in Romania was not that great for at least for the masses. Uh, this one I will get into more in one of the future videos but for this one I remember uh, you know first of all I want to say that I hadn't seen or heard about this movie before I saw it on Romanian television I think the year was 92 or 93. Um, I didn't know anything about it, I hadn't heard about it, I hadn't heard about Nazis before that so this was kind of my introduction to Nazis uh, and of course, be, them being portrayed as, a, as the main villain or the main antagonists in, in the picture, um, you know, helped me form an idea. Uh, and it kind of, now it kind of gives me a good idea of how uh, movies, books uh, are, can do a good job in outlining who is the protagonist and why should you care for them or why should you um, associate with them and who is the antagonist. Um, and I think they're kind of a um, semi-cartoonish but well-built antagonist in this movie. So I remember very distinctly how I first uh, came in contact with this movie. I, I remember there was a long weekend, probably Easter or Christmas or something, because it was Monday, I was outside playing with friends, I came in in the evening and as I, as I came in it was the, the hour when the Romanian television was going to show a special movie because it was that kind of um, you know holiday period. Um, they were showing special screenings of movies and so uh, I came in and just this movie was just starting so I didn't know what it was but I was excited for anything we had very little uh, diverse programming at the time uh, and I was just immediately struck by how beautiful the picture looked but also how beautiful the music sounded uh, even if I didn't understand fully uh, I was I kind of learned a little bit of English by then but I didn't really speak it or understand everything that they were saying or singing 
but it just sounded so good. The orchestration, uh, Julie Andrews, his voice, and all of the engagement that came from the movie, you know, um, it was just amazing. So it kind of stuck with me. I mean, the movie was split in two parts. They showed one part on Monday night and one part on Tuesday night. I remember on Tuesday sitting up all day waiting for just the second part of the movie to start. Uh, and the end of it was so exciting for a little kid of eight, nine years old that it just stuck with me, uh, you know, and, and I just, when I saw this, I, I really wanted to have it. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a special item at least because it brings me back to my childhood. And uh, now I, looking back, I, I understand more about what makes a good film uh, and what makes good music. Um, even if it's on a commercial side or it has these tropes or these uh, cliches sometimes, uh, it still can be built well and then it will last, it will be relevant even, you know, 60 years later and so on. The next item on the list is a more common one, if you will. It is a compilation by the Beach Boys called Greatest Hits. Um, it is an official compilation, but it's, I think it's quite recent, or at least this version of it is from 2012. So this is not super special. A lot of people have Beach Boys in their collection. They may have the albums and stuff. Why I like this one at first, because it has the songs that I like most. Um, just gonna name a few, of course, California Girls and Good Vibrations. And I really like Kokomo as well. But um, what I like about this is the design of the artwork. Uh, you know, this colorful um, surfboard design, as well as especially the disc design, which is, uh, sort of mimicking a vinyl disc with these grooves and, and silver linings. I really find it uh, good looking. So uh, yeah, this is why I have this. I do recommend it, it sounds really good, at least to me. Um, this also has the Capitol Records logo here on the middle of the disc. So I, I really find it a nice release um, from the Beach Boys. Uh, by the way, that's an Australian version of the CD. Now the next one is a bit more special, I think, and again, many people might have it or might have versions of, of our albums and compilations with this uh, artist, is the best of Nina Simone. Now this version, because there were many versions that I could have bought of Discogs and elsewhere, this one I liked more because it included uh, a couple of the tracks that I really love. I put a spell on you, of course, uh, is one, but I really like that this one includes Sinner Man. It's not just a, like a song that it seems very popular, but I really, really love it. But this one I also like because it is a reproduction of a um, compilation that actually was released in uh, uh, 1969 um, and is produced, um, at least is printed by Philips. Um, you can actually see the logo of Philips here on the left side. It also includes a couple of tracks that are exclusive to the CD release versus the vinyl release in, this, in the late 60s. And those tracks are uh, The Other Woman, Woman and uh, Nimikit Pa. Um, I don't know if I said that right, hopefully I did. Um, <laughs> I kind of like, although I do like the more recent releases on CD, they have this nice picture discs, but this one, you know, is from the um, uh, you know, late 80s, early 90s, most of the CDs had this silver front and maybe they had some um, design or at least things written on it. I like this Philips version of this album because of the design of the disc. Even though it's not a picture uh, type of CD, but to me it just uh, kind of uh, brings me back to what was probably the early days of CD releases. The releases. Um, and especially Philips playing uh, an important role in that. This also has, uh, I wouldn't say this is a booklet, it's uh, just a fold-in. Um, it includes the track list and then a few words about each track. This was printed in West Germany and the disc as well. Um, and it was released in uh, 1991. I do recommend this one, like I said, I, feel, I think like it, it sounds good and it's a nice compilation of Miss Nina Simone. The next one uh, is a more recent or modern artist to a certain extent, although 
her music is still kind of jazzy, bluesy type of music. Um, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with her. She's a singer from, uh, or Georgian, you know, original from Georgia. Uh, Georgia as uh, part of the former uh, Soviet Union. Um, but she's, I think, a British artist, uh, original from Georgia, KD Melwa. And what I did is, okay, she has quite a few albums that she has released. Um, I think mid, early mid 2000s, she had her first three albums, which were then compiled in this compilation in 2008. The compilation includes one CD with uh, sort of her best off until then, and a DVD with her arena tour in 2008, uh, with a 90-minute show uh, that was uh, from uh, filmed in, in Rotterdam, Rotterdam in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands, and a behind-the-scenes uh, sort of documentary. I really love her as an artist. Her voice is incredible. Uh, her music is kind of mellow, but also has this jazzy, rhythmic uh, feel to it. Um, she's collaborating, so she's not writing whole, all her songs. She's collaborating uh, with somebody else, uh, but they are just making very good music together. I, I really uh, love what she's doing. The compilation is quite nice. I really like the print on the discs. They have this classy feel with the, uh, you know, white square. Um, Sort of encapsulating everything it's nice actually it's a white square and white circle right on the disc white square on the covers white circle on the disc it's a really nice one to have if you don't want to buy her albums or if you are um, unconvinced I guess this compilation can convince you but is uh, you know it's something that is I feel is special in my collection next ones are a batch of three albums um, and <laughs> compared to what I showed you so far, they couldn't be more different in terms of musical styles, approach, um, presentation, everything. Um, they are a band of, or it's actually more a comedy group slash musical group called The Lonely Island. Um, a lot of people probably will be familiar with them, at least with uh, one of their members, Andy Samberg, who was a cast member on Saturday Night Live. Uh, especially in the late 2000s, uh, early 2010s. Um, and they put out some albums. Uh, many of the songs were transformed into digital shorts, like video videos uh, that were presented during Saturday Night Live runs. Um, and they are, again, the only Lonely Island. Uh, the members are Kiva Schaefer, uh, Jorma Taconi, and of course, Andy Samberg. This is their first album, Incredibad. Bad. Uh, I'm going to show you there. Actually, they have their three albums here. Um, they did have um, a soundtrack of one of the movies that they made a few years ago. Um, that it, I guess it's, it was less popular, uh, but it's quite rare or difficult to find. And if you can find it even on CD, it's like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this is their first album. And this actually contains, I guess, the biggest amount of uh, music videos or at least uh, tracks that are also music videos on Saturday Night Live that were considered quite uh, successful. Uh, they kind of elevated the um, you know Saturday Night Live at that period. Um, they also were quite viral. Uh, the first one being Lazy Sunday, the track where uh, um, Andy Samberg is singing or rapping with <laughs> Chris Parnell. Um, they have a lot of other tracks here that I guess made the rounds on YouTube. I'm on a boat, which is very funny, uh, with T-Pain. Uh, they have a, a song which wasn't, I think, made in a video, uh, but it was quite funny with Jack Black called Saxman. Lazy Sunday, Sunday, of course, with Chris Parnell, as I mentioned. Uh, Boombox, which is one that I like a lot. It sounds really good with Julian Casablancas. Like a Boss, uh, who, whose video on Saturday Night Live featured uh, Seth Rogen. Um, Dick in a Box, which is one of the uh, big fan favorites with, uh, um, with uh, Justin Timberlake and it's actually a part of a trilogy that they would launch in the end in all of the albums. And Nat Natalie's Rap as well, which is with Natalie Portman, Portman and Chris Parnell. You also have, a, so you have the CD here with all of the tracks and you also have a DVD with the videos for most of these uh, tracks that I mentioned. Uh, so this version 
or this album is from 2008. This version was from the for the UK or from the UK, and it, it was made in Germany. Lowly Island's second album, Turtle Neck and Chain. Now by this point, they were already kind of um, well known, and uh, you know their videos and their tracks were kind of looked uh, sought after. Uh, they, you know, Andy Samberg continued to be on Saturday Night Live, and he helped uh, release many of these tracks via the digital shorts on Saturday Night Live. Um, from the ones on this album, uh, you know, the most uh, say well known and actually some of the best, I just had sex with um, with Akon, uh, Jack Sparrow, which is a lovely song with Michael Bolton. Um, I would say Turtle Neck and Chain is a good one with uh, Snoop Dogg. I, didn't, I don't think, I don't recall if it had a video though. Uh, Shy Ronnie 2, Ronnie and Clyde with Rihanna. Um, Mother Lover, which is the sequel to um, Taking a Box uh, with Justin Timberlake again. Uh, the Creep, which is a very funny song with Nicki Minaj and John Waters. Uh, so yeah, you know, it's, it, they still had a, a good batch of, of tracks here. Uh, Threw It on the Ground is a funny one that I also like, uh, it also has a video. And of course this again includes a DVD with the videos from Saturday Night Live that they had. Turtle Neck and Chain. And as you've seen, since I've, I've showed it for a few minutes now, the um, front cover has the band in Turtle Necks and Chains. And this is their third album, the Whack album. This one has a less... Mm, significant, let's say, selection of tracks and videos. Um, it does include the continuation of the trilogy uh, with Justin Timberlake. The third part is called Three Way, The Golden Rule. It's also quite funny. Uh, and it also includes Lady Gaga, aside from Justin Timberlake. Um, I would say YOLO is another song that was kind of um, well received and included Adam Levine and Kendrick Lamar. Um, on the others, it's very difficult to say that they were uh, as big as some of the ones on the first and second albums. Um, but and there were a couple of tracks that at least Samberg recorded and uh, videos for them were presented on Saturday Night Live that are not present on any album, unfortunately, that were quite funny. One was a song that Samberg recorded uh, with uh, a fellow cast member, Kenan Thompson called Two Worlds Collide, where Kenan Thompson was playing a, for some reason, black and, and with a wigged version of Reba McIntyre. It was quite funny, eh? I'm not sure why it wasn't on any album. And the other one that was super funny, actually, and it's not in any album, it was Samberg, um, uh, also with Adam Levine. Uh, it's called uh, I Ran So Far Away, and it's a parody song, including a parody version, of uh, Iran's president uh, Ahmadinejad, played uh, by um, Fred Armisen. It's a great song, a great, great, uh, funny song and, and uh, video. So, unfortunately, it's not on any of these albums. The Turtle Neck and Chain album that I just showed you was uh, released in 2011. I have the US version, uh, and the WAC album was released in 2013, I think, and I have the Australian version for that. I said, I think, in the beginning that they also released um, a soundtrack. Uh, the movie was called Popstar, Never Stop, Never Stopping. It's quite a funny movie, in, at least in their style. Um, and the soundtrack is not bad, they have a couple of tracks. But unfortunately, it's quite rare and quite expensive to get, even on CD. So yeah, that's the only island. So the next two are actually two Beatles uh, pieces. And I, you know, I said I will stay away from them, but not completely. But they are a couple of special pieces, so they are not related to albums, um, you know, compilations or anything like that. One of them you saw briefly in one of my previous unboxing videos, and it's um, this Beatles book um, published under the label Sound and Media. It's actually a book and a CD uh, with uh, interviews. We're going to open the book a little bit and look at it in more detail. Uh, it was released in 1995 in the UK. Um, um, the publisher of the book, at least, is Carlton Books. Uh, both the CD and the book were printed in Italy, it seems. Uh, now, uh, the disc is, I mean, this is the book, sorry. Okay. It, it's a significant size, you know, for, for such a release. 
The disc is this one. I think I showed it a little bit in the unboxing video. I put it in the sleeve to protect it because the way that it was housed in this already uh, um, unglued <laughs> uh, pocket was really less than ideal. Now, the book is uh, credited to John Ewing and it's kind of a sort of a short uh, retelling of their uh, you know story of their career and uh, as a group and you know you have some of the details um, of their history uh, intertwined with quite nice pictures it's a nice little book from that perspective the nice part as well is that near the end It goes into a little bit of uh, history post Beatles for them. So that's quite nice because it kind of goes, uh, it spans uh, a bigger period of time. And then you also have, again, in short, a, uh, a very summarized chronology, and then a listing of the discography uh, with some details about each piece of their albums and releases. So, oh, you know, for the, let's say, non-avid um, Beatles fan, uh, this is a nice addition because you don't need to buy all of the other books that Beatles fans buy, you know. Uh, this one can make do. So yeah, it's a nice release. And the second one, it's somewhat similar. It still relates to interviews. It's the Beatles press conferences uh, published by Uncut Magazine uh, in 2005 in the UK. Uh, press conferences between 1964 and 66. So this one, you know, it's as a Beatles fan, you like to have it because there's a lot of uh, discussions that you know about or don't know about that are captured on here. But the good part, or the thing that I liked about this one is more is the presentation. So the back. Uh, has this uh, listing of the contents and a sort of a track tape uh, type of uh, you know box scan if you will and uh, the disc itself you know has this nice image of a track tape of a tape sorry uh, I kind of really like this yeah so these are kind of a couple of more special items in my Beatles collection And now we're going to continue with one of the more, I don't know, I think special uh, releases that I want to show that is not as common, I think, in, in most collections, um, which is this Jeff Wayne's musical version of uh, the War of, War of the Worlds. Now, maybe you know, so I'm going to try to throw a few dates, a few pieces of information at you. Uh, the War of the Worlds was, of course, a book written by H.G. Wells. Uh, back at the, in the late uh, 19th century, um, 1895 between 1895 and 97, he he wrote uh, the book. And then it was published at first serialized in, in some uh, publications at the time uh, in 1897, and then um, it was actually released as a book in 1898. Of course, it's a it's a book that has an echo, you know, already more than a century later. It's well known. Uh, several movies have been made about uh, after it, and so on. Um, the two interesting parts about this uh, is, I think the precursor to this would be the radio play that was made by Orson Welles, uh, no relation of course to H.G. Wells, in 1938. Uh, on October the 13th it was uh, um, uh, broadcast on, on radio and a few of the listeners are reported to have believed that there's a Martian invasion uh, happening, <laughs> such was the, the recording. Um, and then I think, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's stated necessarily anywhere. Um, I haven't read too much about it, but this Jeff, uh, just this version of a, sort of a musical representation of the World of the Worlds by Jeff Wayne, it seems like it's paying a little bit of an homage to Orson Welles' uh, radio play. But anyway, this was released in uh, 1978 on the 9th of June. Um, I, I think it's an extraordinary piece of uh, sort of music and a little bit of theater intertwined. Uh, it also has these very nice designs and I'll show you a little bit. Uh, there's a booklet inside that shows a little bit of these designs um, that I think really 
uh, elevated uh, this book and, and you know this subject matter uh, when it was published when it was released so one of the reasons uh, one of the reasons that I like this is the presentation of this CD uh, it was released in, in the 90s uh, in 1995 uh, for UK and Europe uh, by Columbia Records and uh, at that time they were still using these jewel case uh, fat boxes as they were calling them and I really like them I really like them more than any kind of digipack um, you know the box is hefty uh, it's quite resistant it has enough space for two discs or even some of them for four discs or six uh, it also houses and you know it houses quite well the booklets uh, uh, you know you don't have to to strain yourself too much to get the booklet out the CDs are held very well in place uh, by the discs hold disc holders and they're overall a very nice way of presenting the disc I'm sorry that they moved away from that now this is the booklet now this version like I said was released in um, 1995 uh, but the actual initial version of CD was released in 1985 um, in London uh, and this one in 1995 has a 10 page booklet and also includes a bonus disc um, or actually the second disc also includes some remixes to the original tracks now as you may know uh, this um, sort of musical theatrical experience um, is not only unique musically but it also includes pieces of text that were extracted or dramatized from the books from the book uh, and of course Richard Burton is one of the main cast members actually the narrator of this which you know his, vo his voice is really iconic uh, so I, I cannot recommend this enough if you don't didn't hear about it or didn't hear it before or uh, you don't own it if you have a collection you want to have a collection this is something that I would recommend for you to get now another piece of sort of trivia about this um, also related to Romania uh, the main track of this or main track line that is on this uh, album uh, was heavily used in Romanian movies from the late 70s and early 80s and I think some teleplays or radio plays as well uh, it was really I mean it was repeated so much that it became one of the most regular or, or um, uh, you know recognizable sounds that I had from my childhood listening to radio plays or watching Romanian movies from the late uh, 70s and early 80s um, I'm guessing that you know the communist state or whoever patronage those uh, productions did not pay any royalties to anybody but when I first heard this which was way later maybe uh, early, late 90s or 2000s um, of course I recognized it immediately but then I also realized where they had had where they had taken uh, this unique piece of music um, beyond this I want to show a little bit of the booklet which is it's quite nice a quite nice booklet because it includes the pieces of text that are used uh, in com uh, conjunction with the music on the production and it's quite a nice presentation you know with the stylized letters and so on um, also it includes some very nice pictures of uh, drawings and um, paintings by Michael Trim, Jeff Taylor and uh, Peter Goodfellow which you can actually see here so they're quite nice accompaniment to the musical production again I cannot recommend this enough okay so uh, I just I had these sealed just a few seconds ago I unsealed them off camera because the camera shut down where I was while I was filming I unsealed them because they had these security stickers on the back and you wouldn't have been able to see the full track list with them on so uh, these are the most wonderful Christmas uh, selection of Christmas songs published by Sony Media uh, Sony Music and this is uh, published by Columbia and it's a five disc uh, Christmas ultimate collection 100 hit tracks and so on so I'm gonna start with the three disc one from from Sony um, the most wonderful Christmas yeah, this is the back um, so this has, has three discs uh, the tagline is 75 sophisticated timeless and cozy Christmas classics uh, and includes such artists as Andy Williams Frank Sinatra Bing Crosby Nat King Cole Doris Day John Mathis Randall Lee the Ronettes Elvis Presley and so on and so forth I like the front of this now 
I'm gonna read a little bit of the track listing for you because this is actually a good one. I really liked it when I saw it. It includes a lot of the classics that you would hear also on uh, different Christmas movies and so on. Um, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Let it snow, rocking around the Christmas tree. Um, Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, Jingle Bell Rock. Here comes Santa Claus. Um, the 12 days of Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Have yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, Jingle Bells. Um, oh, Holy Night. Um, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus with the Jackson 5. I'm not sure that's such a classic, but then. Um, Winter Wonderland and so on. So, uh, the one thing that I also like about this, uh, aside from having a great uh, selection of, of artists, especially from the 50s and 60s, you know, having uh, Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald. Roy Orbison, uh, Johnny Cash, you know, you, you name it. Um, it also has, you know, uh, s double versions of the same track, like for instance, uh, Holy Night appears with a few versions with Nat King Cole, uh, but also Ella Fitzgerald, um, also Julie Andrews, right? Uh, for, for instance, um, which one was it? Let It Snow. You have Frank Sinatra on, on uh, disc one, but you also have the Dean Martin version on disc 3. So that's kind of nice because you can have all of these nice versions. I like the presentation inside as well. You see we have these three discs. The one thing that I don't like usually for these digipacks are again these pockets where the discs are set in because they can get scratched. But I will of course use some uh, sleeves to protect them. But you know it's quite a nice compilation so Sony really has apparently um, quite a uh, uh, collection uh, under their under their wing that they can uh, publish. So yeah, that's a nice one. Let's see how the the red one uh, compares. This is 100 hit tracks, Christmas collection, five discs this time. This will be the backside. So here we have artists such as Shakin Stevens, David X, Essex, Michael Ball, Greg Lake. John Levy, I guess, Catherine Jenkins, I'm not sure, so they have, you'll see, they have a lot of well-known artists, I'm not sure why they're, they're using these ones on the cover. Dean Martin is maybe the best-known one. Uh, it has five discs, so let's see if Columbia, uh, sorry, Universal, not Columbia, this was Universal, I hope I didn't say Columbia at the beginning, um, you know, made a, did a better job in, in uh, gathering these songs. So it does have some of the classics that you can find here. I already see Dean Martin's Let It Snow. Um, you know, it, Shaking Stevens, Merry Christmas everyone. Uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. It also has some more modern uh, or more recent artists like Rod Stewart. Well, Rod Stewart's also kind of an old artist, but um, he has When You Wish Upon a Star. You have Maroon 5, like Happy Christmas War is Over, uh, with uh, basically John Lennon's track uh, being covered. You have Justin Bieber with Mistletoe, you have Ariana Grande with Santa Baby. Uh, you have the Jackson 5, uh, they have, uh, I think, a couple of tracks. Even the Beach Boys are here, The Temptations, um, Ella Fitzgerald. You know, I do feel now, looking at this, that maybe this Sony compilation is a little bit better. Um, this one is more diverse. On CD4 and 5, you have a lot of groups, um, like the, the Spiritual Angels, Blossom Street Singers, uh, Regency Youth Choir, uh, the Blenheim Singers, um, the London Regency Choir, the Angelic Voices, so a few groups that are singing these carols, which should be nice enough. Um, and you also have, um, uh, like I said, a combination of artists from different decades, you know, from Jackson 5, Diana Ross and the Supremes, James Brown, uh, Michael Jackson on his own with Little Christmas Tree, um, Smokey Robinson is on here, Stevie Wonder is on here, and you know, I mentioned before uh, more, uh, let's say, contemporary artists like Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. So yeah, it, it's a good co uh, compilation. I do feel like this one, the Sony one, is a little bit more focused and, and has more classic tracks on it. I do feel weird that both of these are missing something like, you know, George Michael's um, Last Christmas, for instance, or there are a couple of other ones that were from the 80s, 90s. I'm not sure if maybe the, the publishing rights are uh, the reason for that.
So this was about it for today. I hope this was nice for you as well. Uh, I saw again the reaction that was uh, quite positive for the past few videos that we have, we have uploaded. Um, as I mentioned, we were going to follow up with the audio comparison between the Beatles in Mono and Stereo uh, 2009 box sets. That's going to be three episodes. Probably one episode will happen next week and then the week after that maybe episode two. As we close to Christmas time and then to New Year's, um, I do want to, to publish that uh, video uh, that will be more personal, ex uh, about more, more, a more personal experience with music and especially the Beatles and how they influence me and my life. So again, thank you for joining us. If you like our content, it does help grow the channel slowly. Uh, if you subscribe, like, share, if you comment, uh, we do welcome your comments and I hope that is visible from the way that I'm interacting with the people that have commented so far. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to see you here next time.